Hey, what's happening? I'm Claudio, and today I'm gonna to be making some word art for my parents' kitchen. If you wanna see what I did, stick around. Let's make it now. I started by opening a new document in Adobe InDesign. My parents wanted the final piece to be about 30 inches long, so I made my document 31 inches by eight and a half. The height will depend on the font you choose. I chose a font called Script MT Bold. I also increased the size to 800 points. I drew out a text box and typed the word cocina, which means kitchen in Spanish. My family's from Argentina, where Spanish is the main language, so that's the word my mom chose. Once I was happy with the look, I printed it out. Since the print would be much larger than a single sheet of 85 by 11 paper, I chose the tile option under the setup menu. The print is now split across as many pages as needed to print the file to scale. There are tons of ways to tape your tiled prints together. This time, I chose to grab one of these plastic bins, flip it upside down with a strong flashlight pointed up from below. It's easy to see exactly where the pages overlap to tape them down. This print was just a little too tall for one sheet, so it took two rows of pages. I used a razor knife to trim off most of the excess paper. Over at the table saw, I cut a piece of plywood down to roughly the same size as the paper I just cut. I flipped the paper over and applied a small amount of glue stick, just enough to hold it down while I cut out the shape. I could now use the bandsaw to clear out the excess material and then carefully trace out the letters. It's important to choose a font where all the letters are connected, and connected with enough material that your sign won't break while you work. You don't want to rush this step, just take your time and follow the lines as closely as you can. My bandsaw only has a 14 inch cutting depth, which is shorter than my workpiece. This means that depending where I was cutting along the word, sometimes I had to remove a little material and then come back at it from a different angle. The thinner the blade you have on the bandsaw, the tighter the turns you can make. You can also make these cuts using a jigsaw, but it's more difficult to get such clean cuts. Both the letter O and A had material to hog out inside the letters. Since I don't own a scroll saw, I just cut right through the letters and cleared out the material. I would come through later and fill those gaps in. Everything was cut out so I could peel off the template. I used the drill press with a sanding drum to smooth out all the edges. The bandsaw makes fairly nice cuts, but there's still a lot of cleanup to do. The small drum is also able to get into the inside parts of the circular letters. After the edge sanding, I grabbed the random orbit sander and cleaned up the front and back of the word. I also used a file to clean up any remaining bumps along the edge. I poured some wood glue into a pile of sawdust to make a wood paste. I used this paste to fill the two areas where I cut into the letters to cut out the middle. Once that was dry, I sanded everything down smooth by hand and then with the sander. To ease all the sharp edges, I cut an eighth inch round over it with the trim router. Anywhere the bit couldn't reach, I used a chisel to carve back the edge to match the round over. Then I gave the whole piece a final sanding. At this point I realized I forgot the dot on the eye. I cut it out on the bandsaw just like I did before and then sanded the edges on the drill press. This piece was too small to round over the edges with the router, so I just did it here on the drum by sanding on an angle. Same as with the other piece, I hand sanded the edges to make them nice and smooth. Using a damp rag, I wiped off all the dust to get ready for paint. I used a bottle of spray paint that I had left over from building our kitchen table and covered the wood with that. It took six or seven coats sanded between each one. I used some painter's triangles to cover both sides without having to wait for each side to dry individually. Eventually, it looked like this. Well, this project was pretty straightforward. I didn't spend a ton of time finishing everything perfect because it's gonna be mounted way up high in my parents' kitchen. The nice thing is, the process is the same, no matter what size or words you choose to make. The important thing is, I had fun making it and my parents are happy with the results. If you like this video, let me know about it by hitting the like button and leaving a comment. If you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel so you won't miss any of my future projects. You can follow me on social media at Make It Now channel and you can check out my website at makeitnow.tv where you can find my blog and all my past projects. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.